Pickers, how you doing? I found another weird lock in downtown Hanoi in one of the shops, but this one might be a little bit familiar to or this to you. This is a Abus Discus, and I, I, it, it's obviously been on the shelf for a little while. And there's a couple of weird things about it. Um, well, the main weird thing that I see is that the box is marked rekeyable, and I've never seen a rekeyable Discus, so. It's uh, model 24RK70, and it does all over this box. It says made in Germany. It's got the uh, Hangschloss. So it's got a, everything is correct. You know, the eco package that's normally found uh, in Germany. So everything is correct. All the German is correct. There's no, you know, miswordings or anything like that that would lead me to believe that this is a fake discus. Uh, but uh, anyway, let's take a look at it. Um, I've, as I said, I've never seen a rekeyable, and when I when I look at these locks, they're completely sealed. They're welded all the way around. These are permanent, so I, I can't imagine how this could possibly be uh, rekeyable. I went to the website for Abus, and again, they say nothing. In fact, they say these are not rekeyable. So I look at that package, and I might think, well, maybe it was a misprint. Maybe maybe a, it was a factory second. And another reason that makes me suggest that is. If you look at the bidding on this key, this is not, absolutely not typical ABUS uh, bidding. So maybe in the factory in Germany they looked at this lock and said, you know what, we accidentally printed rekeyable on there and the bidding on this key is not so good, so let's just sell this somewhere else. We're not going to sell that here in the motherland. And that, it might be a factory second, is, I guess is what I'm trying to say. It's been on the shelf for a while, and, the re and again, the reason I say that is, you know, it is humid here, so there's a, it, the core looks a little bit tarnished, like it, it's been around a while. I don't know the date of manufacture. Uh, it does work uh, perfectly, so i got to give them credit for that. When you open these, if you're going to pick them, if you've bought one and you do have the keys, one of the things to pay attention to is when you turn the key, if it gives you a lot of resistance, figure out where that resistance is coming from. It's usually because the hasp is pinched inside of the body up here during the during manufacturing and if you a lot of them are easy like this one is not too bad but some of them are really tough they're really pinched and it's difficult to repair it you know there's a big gap on this one but that one's kind of tight so if you find one that's pinched just make a note of that because when you put tension on it you're gonna have to put ex probably exceptional tension in order to overcome that uh, again I could I would normally use a top tension here but because of the convoluted angle, I've got to hold this thing. It wouldn't, you wouldn't really be able to see what I'm doing here. So I'm going to try to use this filed down uh, tension wrench. It fits really well in the bottom of here. It doesn't bind or anything. We get plenty of flex. And I'm going to use a, I can find it here. I'll try to find my thin, my thin pick. Here we go. So it'll fit in there. We shouldn't have too many problems. Again, when I get locks, I always like to go to the back, unless it's really tight. And this one, it is tight, but it's, loose enough so that I can get the pick in, apply my tension, and I'm going to start working my way forward just looking for a binding pin. Uh, I'm trying to get a fault set and I'm touching and you probably noticed I got a fault set now. Uh, it felt like the second pin was the one. I just barely touched him. I had intended to demonstrate it, but we got him. But now the fun can begin. We're gonna, I'm going to put it to the very back again and I'm just going to start giving upward tension, looking for some feedback on one of those pins. And I have feedback on pin two. So I'm going to center him, center my pick on the tip of him, apply upward tension, upper pressure, and release with my tension wrench, and see if I can get him to go home. And there we go, he went home. Now this is only a four pin lock, so you, you know your fun doesn't last a whole afternoon. But these are tough little locks. For the longest time I was intimidated. Okay, I'm on I'm back on pin number three. Let's see if we can send him home. And there we go, we got an open. These do sometimes take exceptional tension, so people are intimidated by that. But don't be intimidated, just uh, put the tension on, get good feedback, and nothing can go wrong. It's pretty pretty simple process. Anyway, thank you for your time. Everybody stay safe and uh, stay legal.